afternoon or evening or whatever time it is now. Um, for those of you that don't know me, which I think there's a couple in here, um, I'm Romer. Uh, my real name is Chris Hurley. All you press people can write that down now because that is probably the most asked question I ever get and it is also the most irritating. So Chris Hurley is the name. Um, pretty much what I want to do for the next hour or so is go over um, the results of the third worldwide war drive which is what most everybody seems to be most interested in hearing about. Um, so I'm going to save that for last. But before that I want to talk about where the uh, project started, what we hoped to achieve, uh, the problems that we ran into uh, almost from the immediate get-go that we started. Um, then I want to address some of the issues that have been brought up both by the uh, press and by the community in general and uh, go through those and pretty much smack them down. And then finally, like I said, I want to talk about the three worldwide war drives that have already occurred. Um, pretty much what happened was uh, last year at DEF CON we had the first uh, war driving contest. The team that won, uh, one of the members of that team actually lived relatively close to where I do. So we decided uh, through talking on the NetStumbler forums that it would be fun to get together and uh, just go out and drive at the same time, see what we could do. Not many people had actually gotten into the whole organized war driving concept at that point aside from just some real loosely organized things uh, that were done on the NetStumbler forums uh, where people would try and find others in their area. Um, what ended up happening was we posted a, a message on the NetStumbler forums just asking if there was anybody that would be interested in uh, joining us. Uh, Renderman, who is actually right here in the front row, um, contacted me right after that and said that he thought it would be a good idea to do the exact same thing in his area. Um, at that point, I uh, mentioned the idea to Black Wave, and he had th he's talked about Mentat and HRATCH having discussed a similar idea in the past. And from there, I uh, went ahead to the DEF CON forums and asked if there was anybody that would be interested in doing this anywhere else. Um, pretty much I was uh, kind of amazed at the response because it was uh, much more positive that people were actually interested in taking their time to do this than I really would have expected. So uh, we went ahead and took what became essentially myself and the watcher were going to go driving around for a couple of hours uh, one afternoon and it turned into what became the worldwide war drive. Um, initially we didn't even have the website. I was running everything off my old website securitytribe.com and um, we had set up everything so that people would just uh, log in uh, to one of the old uh, DEF CON slogan scripts and put their information on there. Um, that was when the first trouble actually started with the, the fact that the only way people could get uh, their contact information out was by putting their email address on there and we didn't really find that people were real thrilled about associating their email address with organizing that at first. So we uh, moved everything over to the uh, mailing list that is hosted by Disorg. Um, oh, by the way, while I'm thinking about it, I've got a ton of shit that I'm going to give out while I'm here, so you guys really should pay attention because I'm going to ask questions every once in a while, and I'm just going to be throwing crap out all day. So if you want some, you should listen. Um, actually, why not start now? Anybody actually remember who, uh, the fir who the person was that lived in my area that I was going to start the war? Uh, that DVD was from uh, Fancy Photographs in the vendor area, so if you, should go, you should go check them out and see if you want to purchase one of your own. I guess you guys have been by their booth. <laughs> um, pretty much we, what we, uh, the way I broke this down as far as myths and misconceptions go are myths are false impressions about both uh, war driving in general and the worldwide war drive that have been thrust upon at you and me and everybody else by uh, the media and the uninformed. Notice those two are not mutually exclusive. The, the first myth that I want to talk about is the one that uh, was very frustrating. It was that we were some kind of covert organization that was run by a bunch of shady people that were out to provide terrorists with information. I don't know how many fucking emails I got. 
Don't you feel like you have some sense of responsibility? No, I don't. It's not my problem, and it's not like we're giving anything out that, that is not publicly available on 9,000 different websites anyway. Um, this was a kind of displayed by an article uh, that was run by InfoWorld magazine. Um, and if everybody, when you registered, if you got your CD, all the articles and emails and everything else that I'm going to show, the full articles are in there. The reason for that is because um, one of the things that pisses me off the most about those guys is that they take one little thing that I say and totally twist it and turn it around and misquote me. So I wanted you guys to have everything. But obviously, it wasn't feasible to put the entire article up in the presentation. But if you're interested, all their articles and all the emails and everything that I reference are all on the CD. Um, pretty much this one kind of what frustrated me here was the uh, initial thing saying that we offered numerous links to other like-minded organizations, as well as the cryptic email address, mine, uh, for those interested in organizing their own local efforts. And then. My next one, war driving appears to be an offshoot of war chalking, another tactic intended to disclose unsecured wireless networks. This fucking guy had no clue, okay? First of all, I, I, I mean, I emailed him back immediately. And I said, first of all, I wanted to address using a handle as an act of hiding my identity. Anybody who has ever been around me knows that I very rarely use a handle. First thing I did when I walked in here is have my damn name on the screen. I, I, one of the few goons here that actually has my name always and always uses my own name, my email address is chris at defcon.org. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm really trying to hide who I am. Um, a lot of people do use uh, handles. They seem to, I'm, for some reason, they seem to have a problem with this. I never understood it. You know, whatever. Um, the other thing, there appears to be no description of the Worldwide War Drive members. There are no members. That's why there's no description. It's a bunch of people that decided to go out one day and drive around where they live. There's no membership. There's no dues. It <laughs> um, and then another thing that he specifically addressed in that article was he said that there was a link from a for-profit security company uh, on our site. I went through my, the website. I went through every page. I, I went through every page that's not even a public page. How many times were I going to do that? Um, I went through every page on the website and could not find a single link to a for-profit security company. I emailed Ephraim Schwartz, the author of this article, and addressed every one of these issues and asked him pretty much what he was talking about. Because one of the things that I specifically do is with people that contact me and say I'd like to organize wherever I live, before I'll actually list them on the web page as an organizer, I email them back with this little disclaimer that tells them if you are uh, uh, representing a company and you're going to try to use this to generate some sort of revenue, then I don't want you to or be an organizer. Every site that's listed on there is somebody's hobby site or somebody's website that they've put together just in a few minutes. And it's, the point is not to have a bunch of uh, people out there using what I think of is a good idea to generate revenue for them. So uh, the other thing is, of course, what we specifically say in the, uh, the FAQ, which is also provided on the CD, um, that we get asked a lot, will you come and do this for me? Hey, I saw your website. Would you be interested in coming out and securing our wireless network? And the answer is always no. We're not interested in doing that. We're not a company. We're not a business. We have nothing to, we're trying to gain nothing from this. Um, the other thing was that he addressed that the Worldwide War Drive participants war chalk the access points. Wow. Yeah, that fucking happened. Uh, I mean, seriously. Has in, I, I would actually like a show of hands in this room of anyone who has actually seen a war chalk mark. Let's see, that would be one. Oh, we got two. What, what are there, about 300 people in here, give or take? And the, it's really widespread. Um, again, one of the things that I specifically put on the website is that do you war chalk them? No, because I think it's stupid. I think it's ignorant. I don't understand the whole th press idea that this is somehow a cool thing. So, um, 
And they, actually, now, the two people that actually raised their hands, you could make me a liar here if you come and introduce yourself to me afterwards, then I will actually know someone that's seen. Um, then, of course, the, 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 the boneheaded idea that war driving is somehow an offshoot of war chalking. Um, when he uh, responded to Black Wave's scathing criticism of, of this article, he uh, told Black Wave that uh, one was war, or that uh, war chalking was derived from uh, war from war driving. So I, I emailed him back, like I said, and I explained to him that yes, absolutely, one was derived from the other. He, it's just that he got it backwards. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is that the myth that information security industry has a hard time locking down access points and, and securing their wireless networks. Um, it's not that hard to do, but uh, William Buck, Bulk, Bulkley, from, uh, he was actually from the Wall Street Journal, but this article was picked up by MSNBC and several other uh, media outlets. Uh, one of his major statements was that war driving bedevils security types um, because it's so cheap and easy to do. All right, most of the people in here, I'm assuming, are here because they actually do go out and war drive from time to time. Do you think it's cheap? I mean, Jesus Christ, man. A, a fucking laptop, a, antennas, cards, pigtails. By the time you just get something out, uh, well, you can always war walk like my dude in New York. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously. I don't understand how they can come up with the idea that this is somehow cheap, a cheap hobby. It, it cost me a lot of money just to be able to go out with a basic setup when I started doing this a few years ago. Um, the media pushed the idea that uh, the worldwide war drive is an attempt to provide people with information on how to get free internet access. That's another one that I get all the time. Um, and it's really frustrating one to me. 90% of the um, the press people that contact me, the very first thing that they ask is, you know, about war chalking. And so then if I don't either hang up or kick my computer across the room, the next question that they'll ask me is uh, about the free access movement. They have nothing to do with each other. I mean, I'm all for those guys if that's what they want to do, the free access movement. Go for it. Enjoy yourselves. I think that they have not been completely honest with themselves or the press with what their true motives are. But that's between, I guess, me and them, not really you guys. Um, but what I don't understand is why the, uh, the press seems to be under the impression that we somehow are feeding the free access movement all the SSIDs, MAC addresses, and locations of these access points that we find because I don't feed them to anybody. Um, kind of from that same article, I wanted to talk about uh, people with knowledge of the location of Unprotected access, or wireless networks can use it for free web surfing to send out email. That's great, but anybody who wants to access a wireless network that's not secured, they don't have to go online to find out where these access points are. They can walk outside. It, it, I mean, it's, it's absolutely retarded to me that they would even consider that this is something that people, that, you know, like terrorists are sitting around going, oh, man, I really wanted to launch my latest cyber jihad, but fucking wiggles down, so I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, does anybody remember what the name of the jackass reporter was that wrote the info world? Kevin Schwartz. By the way, the IVU guys gave me a lot of shit that I'm giving out, so you guys should uh, give them a, a little time. I, you may not be able to find them in the vendor area. They're the really small display. Uh, um, the other thing, th back to war chalking, are you getting the, the idea that war chalking pisses me off? Okay, I, I may have mentioned this before, but the whole idea that war chalking is there, it's, it's a myth. One of the things that I'd like to mention is that we did a poll on the uh, NetStumbler forums, uh, I don't know, a year or so ago, um, that I actually have in my FAQ. We could not actually get one person to put on there that they had actually gone out and done it or seen it. 
so there it is. <laughs> Misconceptions are very similar to myths. Uh, the, the main difference being that um, whereas the myths or what I'm kind of defining is the, the crap that's being spewed by the media, the misconceptions are more people within law, both law enforcement and um, the security and hacking and wireless community, the things that they don't really understand about uh, both the worldwide war drive and war driving in general. Who did Bill, Bill Kelly write for? Wall Street Journal, right there. Pigtail. Well, then I guess, come on up, man. All right, now I'm out of pigtails. Um, first one being that. Uh, the misconception that the worldwide board drive is an attempt to propagate FUD and scare people, uh, both security professionals and network administrators, I could really give a fuck less if they get scared or not. It doesn't matter to me. I've tried to explain this to people. Um, one of the things, the first articles that came out was uh, an article from uh, netsecurity.org that said IT managers should be wary of August 31st. That was uh, the kickoff of the very first worldwide board drive. Uh, that one actually made me laugh a little bit. What the fuck are they going to be scared of? Our goals clearly state that uh, we make no attempt to access any of the networks. Uh, and my other thing is the hackers armed with laptops. The press loves hackers armed with laptops. Um, that they're out there looking for these unprotected networks. Um, this is, the project is a statistical analysis of access points that are deployed. It has nothing to do with, with gaining access to them. It has nothing to do with them being protected or unprotected. This seems to be some kind of idea that we are only interested in unprotected networks. That's absolutely not the case. One of the most common questions that I get from people or from reporters is, well, According to the goals on your site, you guys want people to secure all these access points. Well, then won't you not have anything to do anymore? Won't, will it still be fun to war drive? I'm like, well, first of all, everybody's not ever going to do it. It's not going to happen. Second of all, what difference do I care if it's got WEP on or not? If all I want to do is drive around and count the number, they can all have WEP on. I'm happy. Um, some within the community have... Uh, the misconception that the Worldwide War Drive is a marketing tool to sell products or services. Aside from all the vendors that I'm going to pimp today, that is absolutely untrue. Um, the Worldwide War Drive data is being used to contact people for the selling, purpose of selling services. I get this one a lot. To show potential customers how insecure everybody is and uh, that we don't respond to these accusations. This was from a uh, email that came across the Kismet wireless mailing list. Uh, like I said, the email is actually on your uh, CD because I don't want to misquote my good friend. Um, as I responded to him both on the mailing list and, and uh, in person, um, I'm sorry, not in person, but and individually, we don't sell anything. I mean, I have, there's no e-commerce site on there, even though I do have that spiffy securing your e-commerce site book that was given out at Black Hat y'all last year. I haven't actually cracked the spine yet. So, um, Everything that we have on the website, all the information is free. We get it from tons of sources. My own experience, the experience of the other organizers, people that actually just come across the site. I mean, anybody who's, who's looked at the site knows that uh, I don't have every access point and every firmware version listed on there. It's because when I first did it, I took the access point that I had and took a few screenshots to throw it on there. As more and more people, particularly Agent Green, who provided me with a ton of information, um, and Black Wave has sent some information to me, it, whenever someone sends me that stuff, I just go ahead and throw it into an HTML file and throw it up on the website. And then hopefully if somebody ever sends me something that's wrong, somebody else will let me know so I can take it off. Um, we don't have any customers. There's no, there, there's no reason for us to talk about potential customers because we don't have any in the first place. Um, and finally, the individual that sent this email to uh, God in the world t saying that I didn't respond to him and that he took this as so shady and, you know, I, it, 
is obvious to me since he won't address these uh, allegations that he is just using this to make money. He gave me exactly 36 hours to respond to his email before turning around and posting this to every mailing list that I'm a subscriber to. It pissed me off. I didn't understand it. I mean, 36 hours. I mean, Jesus Christ, I get like 9,000 emails a day. And he, he wanted me to respond to him immediately or else he was going to turn around and drag me on mailing list. Fuck you. <laughs> what? Eh, I hate these fuckers that you, uh, that one of the things that's going to be changing on the Worldwide War Drive site is all you dummies that have sent me emails, I'm posting them. <laughs> the misconception that is, uh, a lot of people have seen is the one that wireless networks are more likely to be attacked or compromised uh, during the time frame of the Worldwide War Drive. Uh, Sands News Bites absolutely trashed me after the first Worldwide War Drive. Uh, they were, them and Slashdot were the primary reason that I moved everything off of Security Tribe and onto uh, its own uh, server. Uh, Slashdot, obviously, because they gave me the industry induced denial of service attack. And um, Sands News Bites, because of the fact that, you know, I do actually have a job, and up until that point, I had been using my, my real name as the primary organizer. Um, they kind of scared me a little bit because everybody who knew me got a hold of this and was calling me and emailing me and asking me what was up. So I was afraid I was going to get fired. So I went ahead and used my, my, went back and used Romer a couple of times. Um, I didn't understand why they uh, felt it necessary to compare war driving to uh, peeking in your neighbor's bedroom window. Yeah, they're nice folks. Um, Canadian Security Intelligence Service. They were very concerned about the first worldwide war drive. Most of you have probably seen the uh, 9,000 news reports about them uh, investigating RenderMan and JJ Caxor. Uh, most of the stuff that I'm going to show now is uh, straight from RenderMan's site. Um, I'm not going to read this, and it's on your CD, so you guys can read it. But uh, I wanted to kind of get as much of this on here as I could. Um, by the way, let me think. Any good questions anybody can think of? Um, when I was talking about, uh, uh, go ahead, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of minutes ago, I mentioned Agent Green. What was that in reference to? You. How about one of the uh, shirts that Agent Green made up for World Wide War Drive 3? Oh, thank you. Thanks. More swag. Uh, just so everybody knows, um, Urban Underground is uh, going to be selling the Agent Green shirts tomorrow. He uh, shipped them all out to us this week. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about the shirts a little bit more in, in a couple of minutes, but uh, he did do a big price reduction on them, and I think what are they, ten bucks for extra large and above, and eight bucks for large and below. Ten for medium, fifteen for anything else. I bet you like my price is better. <laughs> but uh, you, you guys are going to have those out tomorrow, right? Okay, so. Um, Pretty much what happened was when we decided to do the first worldwide war drive, the uh, our, our good fine Canadian friends decided to do a press release, and I told them you really don't want to do a press release. But as usual, nobody listens, and so they went ahead and did it. And uh, what ended up happening was that um, they went they put their names in here, and the CSIS uh, got concerned. They ended up educating themselves. Uh, after a period of time, it, once they discovered through their investigation that nothing untoward was going on, um, Brenderman's entire uh, website is mirrored on the C not your entire website, but your entire uh, directory for the CSIS investigation is on the CD. The main reason being that uh, I wanted to put the PDF 
from uh, CSIS, their, their uh, un or declassified report on there, but the PDF is so hard to read, you couldn't tell what was going on on the, on the slides. So you can kind of muck through that yourselves. Um, the truth about what the World Wide War Drive is. It's an effort by security professionals, hobbyists, people with too much time on their hands, um, to just generate awareness of the need by people that are out there to secure their access points. Now, once we let them know that, look, when you buy that Linksys access point and plug it in at your house, you have got some serious issues. If they, re if they go out and they read my website, they read any of the 9,000 press articles that are out there about the same thing, and they say, you know what, I don't really care. I don't mind giving out my internet connection to everybody. That's cool. I don't give a shit. As long as they understand that when they buy it, it is not secure. John Q. Public does not seem to have a real good grip on the most basic, basic of security. So if they actually see this, you know, even though Bill Bull Kelly's story was as shitty as it was, it did get a lot of uh, hits to the website and a lot of people who normally would not have come to see what I was talking about did actually at that time come to the website and we got a lot of positive feedback about the website and a lot of negative feedback about the article. Um, the f wanted to kind of go through the stats now from the uh, worldwide war drives. The first one, as you guys know, took place between uh, August 31st and September 7th of 2002. Uh, there were about 100 people that participated in that one from uh, 22, 22 areas. We had we represented six, or we were able to get coverage in six countries and uh, two continents uh, here in Europe. Obviously, were the two. Um, First time around, we had a whopping 9,300 access points found. And of those, WEP was enabled on about 30% of them. Um, we're you know, interested with the 30% the ratio because that had been relatively close to my own personal experience from the uh, war drive and the diet done, that it was right around that 30% range. Um, and it was interesting to see that that was relatively true across the board, regardless of where people were, were driving. Um, when we, a couple of months later, uh, Renderman and a few other people contacted me and said, you know, we really need to do this again. We really need to do it again. This was where we made probably the biggest mistake uh, with the Worldwide Board Drive, and that was doing the second one uh, two months later. We, we needed to wait uh, and actually have a chance to Di let people digest the information that we had, we had put out there before we even bothered to, to try again. But um, winter was coming and everybody wanted to do it again before it started snowing. And you know, Canada, Jesus, man. Um, you guys have all kinds of problems. Uh, <laughs> um, so we went ahead and did it again just a couple, couple of months later. Um, that time, although it was as close to the first one as it was, and partly I would say in uh, thanks to the slash dot posting, um, there were about twice as many people. We had 200 people show up. This time around, uh, 32 areas were represented. Uh, seven countries on f and four continents were represented the second time around. Um, what was a little bit disheartening was that the uh, while the number of access points jumped um, you know, about 63%. Uh, no, the percentage of web-enabled access points decreased uh, 2%. I, what, I'm not sure if that was just at the time because the information wasn't out there or if it was because um, we, our initial run with only having 10,000 access points was not really a legitimate uh, gauge of how people were uh, taking care of enabling WEP on their APs. Um, and since I'm not going to drive around and talk to 24,958 people and ask them, we'll, we'll never know. Um, this time around, we had uh, the best response that we've ever had at the World Wide War Drive. Um, one thing that I want to do before we go on to those stats is give out some more of this stuff. So uh, let's talk for, let's see, what we got? BPEC cellular PC card. Um, I don't know who gave me this, so I'm just going to throw it out to the person who can tell me 
the total number of access points found in the first World Wide War Drive? What was the what percentage in the first one? That's courtesy of uh, Disorg. They have more of those too, so tell your friends. Um, then the what percentage for the second worldwide board drive? Uh, that was you, yeah. Board driving is not what? What's from who? Oh. So that cellular carb was from a uh, Unix surplus, uh, Bodo man. So make sure to say thank you to him for that. Um, War drive is not a crime t-shirt, courtesy of uh, IVU. Okay, um, this time around, uh, we announced the third worldwide war drive long before the uh, event actually took place. We announced it, I believe, March 31st or something like that. and. The one thing that I wanted to do was give enough time between when we said, hey, this is something we want to do, and the event actually taking place to have enough people hear about it and tell their friends about it and plan on it. It worked out pretty well doing it this way. Um, again, we had uh, more people for the third straight time. We had about 300 people participate this time around. Um, 52 areas participated, uh, 11 countries and four continents. And yeah, you know, if the guys in Australia would actually get GPSs, I could hit five. But they send me all their data with no GPS, so I'm, you know, they do offer to you know plot it on a map for me, but that's really not that fucking helpful. <laughs> um, this time around, like I said, we had 88,122 access points found. WEP increased. Uh, by 4.34 percent to 32.26. Uh, no web obviously decreased 4.34 percent. Um, the default SSID that were still enabled on access points were at uh, 24,525, and the default SSID with uh, no web enabled was at 21,822. Um, again, the Stuff that I was interested in this time around was the percentage of web enabled access points, and I wanted to see it go up, and it did. And also, the last four or last three categories there, I wanted to see them go down and was very happy, particularly with the 6.68% uh, drop in uh, default SSID with no web. Um, combined results from all three of unique access points, 113,529. Um, WEP enabled at 31.41%. Um, one of the things you probably noticed about the stats this time around is that the uh, most common SSID found, I'm not keeping track of anymore, it's, it's Linksys, and there's a shitload. <laughs> and the second most common, anybody have a guess? Default. God damn, dude, you're winning everything. Uh, how about Worldwide War Drive Coin? Um, yeah, default is obviously number two, and it, there's just a slightly smaller shitload. Um, Worldwide War Drive Coin that I just gave out, I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit. Uh, what, about three or four months ago, uh, Maui contacted me and asked me if it would be possible to uh, do a worldwide war drive coin. I told him, you know, as long as you're going to pay for it, dude, I don't care what you do. Um, so he was, he was actually willing to spend his own money and create the worldwide war drive coins. The one thing that we decided to do with them is there, under no circumstances would we ever sell them. We, will not, we have about 300 of them that were made up. And we're going to give them out to people that deserve them and people that we feel like have been a value to the community. And regardless of how many times you contact me asking me, hey, man, I will give you X number of dollars for a coin, the answer is always going to be no. Um, the first 30 people, uh, a lot of whom are either in this room or at DEF CON, uh, have already been contacted and are going to get their coins uh, either while they're here and a lot of them already have them or uh, the people that are not here 
we're going ahead and uh, shipping them out to. And again, that one's actually on my dime, so you got to hate that. You should feel really privileged if I actually send you something in the mail. Um, pretty much what the criteria was for the World Wide War Drive coin was uh, you had to have been an organizer that actually provided results. And Jesus Christ, could, you, could my organizers be more flaky? Why even bother to send me an email and put a website up telling me that you're going to send me shit and then don't? I don't think that anybody's really giving you props for your awesome HTML skills. Um, the people that are on here are my three-time organizers that did actually come through with results every single time. Also, the authors of the major tools, and one of them that's missing that is uh, hopefully in the room, I'm not sure, uh, that I caught up with and got coin number 31. That's Data Worm uh, for Pocket Warrior. And I felt kind of bad about forgetting him, especially since he won my contest last year. <laughs> um, everybody else are the major tool writers and people that have provided a significant uh, contribution to the worldwide war drive or the community in general. Um, and you can probably recognize most of the names. Obviously, Wiggle, who has been a gigantic supporter of the Worldwide War Drive from the time that we first came up with the idea. Uh, Bobzilla, Arkasha, and all those guys have done nothing but bend over backwards to help us out any way we could, and we really appreciated it. Um, then the people that wrote the initial conversion scripts that were used last year are in there, and that would be Medic, who's in the front row. Um, Black Wave. I really have no idea why I decided to give that guy one. <laughs> um, Airfoot, who many people know, actually uh, donated all the server equipment for the machine because mine had its catastrophic failure last year, and I appreciated that. He did all that again out of his own pocket. Um, and then uh, Furf, who is actually hosting the site now, free of charge. Um, Dark Tangent, because DEF CON has been extremely supportive of the World Wide War Drive. Uh, this year, he let me give him this, uh, send him this presentation and this idea uh, before he even opened the call for papers to anyone and went ahead and gave me a speaker slot, so I really appreciated that. Um, everybody else that's on there, you can kind of figure out, and all the uh, criteria for how you get one of the coins will be on the World Wide War Drive site. Assuming that we continue to do the project for the next few years, the criteria will change. For instance, next year, uh, you would still have a three-time organizer limit. It would not have to be an organizer for all four. Um, other things of that nature, as, we, as it moves on and progresses, the criteria will change slightly. Um, the conclusion, pretty much uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, release the, uh, stat generated pro uh, the stat generator program that I use to scrub the stats out of this. I'm going to do that in about 30 days. Uh, my intended um, release date is September the 1st. What I want to do is get feedback from people on the stats they're interested in between now and then. I know I did the ones that I thought were interesting, but I have had other people say, hey, why don't you tell me what this stat is or what that stat is? So if you, would, if you are interested in a different statistic that's not currently being uh, reported, just send me an email and let me know and I'll go ahead and uh, change the script and add it in there for you. Uh, once I have that all squared away, I am going to release that uh, under Church of Wi-Fi, the same place that has War Glue. From now on, World Wide War Drive is going to be annual. We're never going to do more than one in one year, and it's going to be sometime in the summer, um, essentially the ju late June, early July time frame, the same thing we did this year. Um, I have to figure out... I don't want it to be a static set of dates, um, like you know, June, June 28th to July 5th every year. It's not going to be that way, but we'll sit down and figure out when is a good uh, week to do it that year, and we'll keep it a, a, an annual event for the time being. Uh, the other thing is uh, the data upload and stat generation process is uh, going to be an automated process. We were actually ready to do that this time around, and just as uh, using technology similar to what Wiggle does, just as soon as you upload your, uh, your data set, then we could tell what the results were and the combined totals up to that point. Uh, the reason it didn't do it is because then it would have kind of taken the suspense out of this talk. Um, that's pretty much it except for one other thing uh, that 
nobody in this room, to my knowledge, actually knows. Had the stats been uh, crappier this time around, had they gone down for the third straight time, then the third worldwide boil drive would have been the last one. Uh, if, I, if the message isn't getting out there and people aren't hearing what we're trying t to say and taking a look and figuring out, hey, maybe I should turn WEP on here, I don't see the point in even bothering to, to waste my time putting a website together and uh, you know hassling my friends day in and day out to say, hey, dude, please, man, you got to show up on Saturday. Um, but because the stats were as good as they were and I was, I was pleased that we had at least some uh, increase in, in WEP and, uh, and a, what I consider a relatively significant increase in the uh, no WEP and default SSID category. We're going to go ahead and keep doing it uh, for a while anyway. The last couple of things I have before I let you guys ask me questions, if there are any. Um, who designed the World Wide War Drive coin? Yes, sir. You've already got one. Oh, real quick, go ahead and she can come up. Uh, Bodo from Munich Surplus has got a couple of t-shirts that he was going to give out to you guys. So, uh, hey, CK3K, come here. No, come up here. You, you're answering all the questions. Ask one. Let's see here. What is the purpose of the worldwide war drive? Generate awareness. Good job. All right, come up and get your T-shirt. Is that still what we're giving out? I don't, I don't know if you guys noticed this year or not, but Bodo's got a uh, got T-shirts at his booth for the first time. Always had had the good hardware and everything, but he uh, does have T-shirts this time around. So you should check them out. Most of them are actually pretty good. And if I'd wear it, I mean, Jesus, it must be good. Um, the other one, Mr. Wave, could I get you to come up here, please? Has anybody met Black Wave before? He's, he's good people. Question. All right. Um, who's, or who was currently, or who was at the time in, under investigation by the CSC? CK3K, stop oh. answering. You know <laughs> the answer. CK3K knows all the answers to all the questions. Who said Brenda Man? Tim? Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to get by Bodo's table yet. Thank you. Um, thanks. I don't know if you guys have had an opportunity to get by Bodo's table yet in the vendor area, but you should make sure and get over there. He's got uh, lots of good stuff, and he always does a great job cutting deals for our DEF CON folk. Um, Last couple of things I have on here, I'm pretty much just going to toss out as you guys uh, walk out because I can't really think of anything else I want to ask. Um, do you guys have any questions for me? Yo. Uh, did you look at the web trend, uh, limiting the same area that you had uh, people driving prior to the I'm sorry, was the question, uh, make sure I understand your question. In other words, Access points that were found more than once, did I check specifically to see if the web status had changed on them? Um, no, I, I don't have, uh, general area wise, no. As far as the number that web changed on, in other words, it had no web at one point and now we're, was web enabled, I do have that uh, information and I'm going to put it up on the website. Yeah. Good. I, I don't understand what your question is. What? Oh, okay. Well, thanks. That was an awesome statement. Next year you should speak. Yeah. That is a highly guarded secret. Uh, it's not as good as Converge's. I don't know if you saw his car or not. It is uh, incredible. But I have uh, spent several dollars uh, here and there on, on stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm in probably for 
uh, somewhere between five and eight thousand dollars all told. So that that that's without the car. I I already had it. Yes. Uh, that would really be absolutely against everything that I would even consider doing. Um, the information's out there. All the vendors, the primary vendors, know about the site. I, you know, see them in my web logs all the time and my access logs, so I know that they're coming. Um, if I co if I go to them and contact them, then I'm a, I'm a step away from doing exactly what I don't want to do, which is then offering to help them. And the only help that I want to provide is information. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this will probably be the last time that WEP only is uh, generated. Another thing that I wanted to mention too is uh, the WEP enabled statistics. Um, I'm not foolish. I understand that there are a significant number of access points out there that are running some secondary authentication protocol, and that's why they don't have the WEP turned on. Since I have absolutely no way of figuring that out, I, can, I, I can't report on it. But I would figure that you have somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 or 3% either way that you could uh, let those numbers sway. Yes, sir? Uh, as far as what information they're being fed, no. I know that um, I've been contacted by uh, certain three-letter organizations with questions about uh, the World Wide Board Drive. They have been very cool with me. I did not have the negative experience that, that RenderMan did. Um, the, they have also been uh, very clear in their response to the legality of war driving. Um, then we made sure to put that information out in pretty much every forum and every mailing list and every website that we had a chance to do it on. But as far as specifics with what information they are getting or what misinformation they are getting, I really don't. I, I was more talking about the misinformation that they are spreading. Anyone else? All right. I have got uh, several of these exceptionally annoying DOC whistles up here. Uh, they're really the kind of thing that makes Zach real happy if you go up and blow it in his ear. Um, I've got those. I've got uh, another World Wide War Drive t-shirt. I've got a whole bunch of wiggle stickers. And I've got two of the uh, dog tags from the war driving contest for people that did not uh, get a chance to participate in that. Come on up and get some shit on your way out. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>